Uh, so welcome. Welcome um, to our monthly webinar. My name is Sandra Williams-Reed. I am the support and education chairperson um, who is in charge of putting on these monthly webinars. Um, we're very glad that you were able to join us tonight on this lovely evening. So thank you so much for taking time to join us. A uh, couple of housekeeping before we begin. Uh, Colleen, once she starts presenting, she will do her full presentation. After her presentation, uh, we will have time for a question and answer session. If you have some questions, the chat will be open for you to type it in, and then we will let Colleen know those uh, questions. Um, I, I have along with me tonight, I have Sarah, who is uh, our co-chair with the Support and Education Committee, as well as Jeremy, who is with uh, Lupus Ontario. Uh, he's here as well. He does all the recording and he puts all this together in social media for us. So thank you, Sarah and Jeremy, for uh, being with us tonight. Uh, quick note uh, for wh whoever is new on the call tonight and who is currently not a member of Lupus Ontario, uh, just a reminder, membership is free with Lupus Ontario. So just please go online, lupusontario.org, and you can sign up for your free membership. Um, Again, just so you know tonight, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded for privacy purposes, um, just so you're aware of that before we begin. Colleen, are you ready? I sure am. Okay. Perfect. Okay, are so I'm ready? just gonna do the introduction, Colleen, so give me a moment, okay? All right, yep. Okay, so tonight we have Colleen Mack with us. Colleen is a 27, year old self-thought makeup artist and mother from Belleville, Ontario. Shortly after giving birth to her son, Colleen was diagnosed in 2013 with lupus and struggled to accept her prognosis and began battling anxiety along with painful symptoms of her disease. In 2018, um, de deciding to attend college, Colleen graduated with a degree in business, public relations, and event management. But her passion and love for makeup never waned. She began experimenting and practicing makeup techniques to express her creativity in the hopes of inspiring and educating others. Colleen has discovered a sense of peace within herself and in the future hopes to become a professional makeup artist um, to help others spread awareness and educate people about lupus. In this talk, Colleen will discuss how she used her skills to spread awareness and educate others about lupus. Makeup has become a form of expression and creativity outlet that has helped her to cope with her illness. Colleen, thank you for taking your time to volunteer with Lupus Ontario and bringing um, awareness to lupus. Uh, just a quick note, I actually met Colleen online through social media. Uh, she had a post for Lupus Awareness Month in May, and it, it caught my eyes, and I reached out to her because her message was so timely. So thanks again, Colleen. Welcome, and you may take the floor. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and I, I really do appreciate you reaching out and giving me this opportunity to, uh, to chat with everybody here. So I'll just jump right into it. All right. All right, here. So today I'm going to talk about uh, makeup and skincare and getting ready for summer. So why is it important to um, protect ourselves during the summertime if you're somebody who suffers with lupus? So studies shown about three quarters of people who suffer with lupus have photosensitivity. They do believe that the UVA and UVB rays cause a reaction with our DNA and the RNA, which leads to inflammation and redness of our skin. These symptoms can include that butterfly rash that you see on your face, the malar rash, skin lesions, which can be very sore, and in sun-induced flare-ups, which can be very debilitating for some. So in simpler terms, what I like to, to say to people is we're kind of allergic to the sun um, because most people don't quite understand what I mean where I can't go out into the sun a whole lot and I got to take the steps I need to, uh, to do in order to protect myself. 
in order to have, you know, an enjoyable summer with friends and family and go outside and go to the beach or go camping, um, you know, normal summer activities. So the first step in protecting ourselves Ian, would be um, a basic skincare routine. Um, we got to take care of our, our skin. It's basically, you know, a map of our, our lives here. So in order to do that, you want to have a basic skincare routine. And the three main steps would be uh, cleansing, which would be washing your face. Oh, I do see a little typo there. Um, so cleansing and washing your face is a big thing. You want to um, get rid of all the dirt and the, the environmental um, stuff that's on your skin that you had all the, the, uh, the pollution that's in our air. Another big thing would be toning, which is mostly balancing our skin. This is another really important thing that I find that I never really did growing up, I would just kind of wash my face with soap and water and maybe throw on a little bit of moisturizer. And that was it. And uh, lastly is moisturize. We really want to take care of our skin and giving, giving it that drink. So definitely hydrating. When you're adapting to a new skincare routine, the way you apply it should be based on the consistency of the product. So you want to go what is thinnest to thickest. So that would be the cleanser, the toner. If you want to add a few extra steps, that would be including a serum, an eye cream, and the moisturizer. And always have a moisturizer with SPF in it, which is the most important thing. So a few um, cleansers that are good for sensitive skin because most people who have lupus do have very sensitive skin would be a few of these ones right here. So all of these are very affordable. You can, they can be found at your local drugstore or Walmart. And uh, all of these um, uh, are mostly gels. I would suggest a gel if you're somebody who has dry skin. I find that if you're using a foaming cleanser, it can, it can definitely dry the skin out a whole lot more and cause that tightness. And it, it's a little irritating. So if you do have dry skin, I would suggest a gel cleanser than foaming. And there's just a few here. So the Neutrogena Ultra Gentle Hydrating Cleanser. The CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser is also a big one. Um, I know that that brand has gotten a lot of recognition this past year with a lot of the young folks on TikTok kind of finding it and they're just stealing it right off the shelves, left, right and center. The Cetaphil Gentle Cleanser, the, Evol the Vino Ultra Cal Calming Hydrating Gel Cleanser. This is nice because it has that oat, so it really calms the skin if you do have a lot of inflammation and redness. And then uh, what I use is the, uh, the Marcel Ultra Gentle Cleaning Gel. I do really enjoy that one and it's a uh, dermatologist recommended as well. So before I mention toners, some people might not know what toners are, but why are they important? So after you cleanse your skin, there still are traces of dirt and um, environmental uckiness that's on our skin. So what the toner is going to do, it's going to help remove the ex of uh, the excess traces of dirt that is stuck in our pores. It helps calm the skin, tighten the pores so they don't look so big. Usually I, I have bigger pores around my nose. So I wanna tighten those up and try to minimize them the best I can. And then it also hydrates and refreshes your skin. Ways that you can apply your toner would be um, putting it on a cotton pad and then rubbing it on your skin, or you can even just put it on your hand and just kind of rub it in gently there. Uh, here's a list of toners. Once again, these can be found at the drugstore. They're very affordable. I would look for a toner that is alcohol free. Alcohol dries out the skin. So alcohol free is a big one here. The one that I really enjoy would be the Pixi Retinol Tonic. Um, the retinol in this, uh, in this toner is really good because it mostly contains vitamin A and vitamin A is what kind of helps um, regenerate your skin cells. So it gives your skin that little extra 
boost that it needs, um, you know, during the day or during the night when you're sleeping to help regenerate your, your, your skin cells. Um, all these other ones um, are, you know, also very great. The Burt's Bees Ro Rose Water Toner is also very nice and soothing for the skin and the, the Fires Facial Toner as well. So moisturizers with, moisturizers with SPF, um, big thing is, you know, we can apply sunscreen, you know, to our arms and, you know, on our back as well, where we think that we're going to get the most sun if we're out, but applying it to your face is also a big thing. And they say that you want to apply sunscreen every 80 minutes. So I always pick a moisturizer with SPF because it kind of gives me that little extra protection if I'm going out into the sun. And I always, doesn't matter when it's the, uh, the summertime or the wintertime, I always have a moisturizer with SPF just to give myself that little extra protection here. So once again, these are all drugstore. I also wanted to focus on more, um, you know, financially friendly products here because, you know, we are in the middle of COVID. Some people are still, you know, stressed financially with trying to uh, get back to work. So these won't break the bank at all. Once again, I have the, uh, the survey one here, which is very popular, uh, Aveeno Positively Radiant. All of these range from about SPF 30 to SPF 35, which is really good. Um, one do I, I really do enjoy is the Olay Complete UV 365. That is a very nice one. And these also don't leave like a greasy feel on the skin or that, that white cast that kind of washes you out quite a bit. Because I mean, in the summertime, we want to have, you know, nice, really glowy, kind of warm skin. And uh, yeah, these won't cause that, that horrible white cast that you can get sometimes from other, other sunscreens. So once you apply your, sun, uh, your, your foundation of the skincare, a good skincare routine is the perfect foundation to apply your makeup. And, um, you know, based on what you like, there's a few different, um, you know, bases that you can choose from. So foundations I usually go for, I like the full coverage. They do have the wide shade range, um, different finishes. So if you um, have very oily skin or combination skin, you might want to go for a matte finish foundation. If you have dry skin like me, I usually go for a dewy foundation. I don't get that tightness or that dryness on my skin once I lay the foundation down. Um, but the only thing is, is that it is definitely heavier on the skin to wear. If you um, want something lighter that is, you know, medium to full coverage, uh, I would suggest a CC cream. This is also good if you have more mature skin. It's not going to be very heavy on the, uh, on the skin. It's going to look more natural. And CC, CC creams are, um, you know, it stands for color correcting. So it's going to help with that, that redness that you may have from your butterfly rash. And it also contains skin-loving um, anti-aging and hydrating properties. Most of them also contain hyaluronic acid. And when you hear hyaluronic acid, you hear acid and you think, oh no, um, I don't wanna put that on my skin. But hyaluronic acid is um, actually very great for the skin. Your skin actually produces it naturally, but as you get older and with the environmental um, pollution in the air, the, the hyaluronic acid that your skin naturally produces, you know, goes down. So we want to have um, products that have the this in it because it helps kind of um, hydrate and plump our skin and keep it more youthful. It helps um, with fine lines and wrinkles. So a CC cream would be very great if you have more mature skin. And then a BB cream, which is more of a blenishing balm. It's the lightest coverage that you can get. It's meant to even out the skin tone a little bit more. And then it's packed full of um, antioxidants as well. So more skin loving ingredients, but it's more so if you just kind of want to give your skin that little extra coverage and more vitamins. It also usually contains more SPF in it to give you that bit more protection. Um, so that's another, another uh, way that you can go throughout the summer when you're applying your makeup. 
So foundations with SPF, there are quite a few. Some of them don't quite say that they contain SPF in them. So I wanted to do some research for you guys and give you a few options here. So my favorite right now is the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ages Foundation. This offers SPF 20. It is a cream foundation, so it does lay on very nicely and it gives you full coverage. The only thing with this foundation is that it's not a wide shade range. So if you're like me and you're very pale, it can look a little bit darker. Um, all these other foundations, um, the Revlon Color Stay with SPF 15, the Rimmel London Lasting Finish with SPF 20, and one of my other favorites is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear 24 Hour with SPF 25. Um, this is also the L'Oreal one is also more of a dewy foundation. So if you do have the dry skin, I would def definitely recommend that one. And it, it lasts quite a while if you, um, if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff throughout the day, it does, um, stay on for quite a, quite a good time here. So like I said before, you can choose the CC creams or the BB cream. So here's a couple that I found that are really great. The Olay 7-in-1 CC cream is, is great. Um, the It Cosmetics uh, for your skin, but better. It is a little bit higher end. You can find this at Sephora online. Um, but it does have the most high risk, highest coverage for protection with the SPF 50 plus. Um, these also come in different um, shade ranges that is, is really good to kind of match your skin tone here. And then the baby, the baby creams as well. You can find these at your local Walmart or drugstore, Maybelline uh, Dream BB Fresh and the ALF one. They're also very good with a uh, good percentage of SPF in them as well to kind of give your skin that little extra protection over top of your moisturizer. So once you lay on your foundation, what I like to do is I use a setting spray. The setting spray, what it does is it kind of um, prevents creasing and smudging and fading of the, the products that you just applied. It's going to help melt the products into your skin a lot better so it lasts th more throughout the day. And some of the setting sprays you can get with SPF, um, which is great throughout the day if you want to uh, apply more um, sunscreen to your face, I would recommend carrying this setting spray around and, you know, throughout the day, just kind of spritz it all over your face. And then you can either just let it dry naturally or go in with um, like a, a sponge or a beauty blender and just kind of blend that out and just let it soak into your skin. So these will be great if you're going to be out at the beach for a while, or if you have a lot of makeup on and you're not going to be home in a while. This is a great touch up um, throughout the day to help, you know, prevent that your your skin's getting the most protection um, while, you, while you're out and about. If you're doing things with the family or your, your children, it's really great. And once again, these also have a different finish. So you can pick a setting spray that has more of a dewy finish, which is going to give you more of a glowy look or a matte finish. Um, so a few here that I have, the Pixie Sun Mist SPF 30, one of my favorites here, the Pacifica Set and Protect SPF 45, and then there is a Milani one as well. And once again, you can get these at Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart, wherever you choose to shop, and they are quite affordable. So makeup tips for summer, as you know, it can be very, very hot. And if you're wearing a lot of foundation, you're going to sweat. Um, so tips for you to make your makeup last throughout the day is like I said in the previous slide, use a setting spray with SPF uh, for touch ups throughout the day. You want to make sure that you're protecting your skin the most. Um, I like to dermaplane before applying my makeup. So if you don't know what dermaplane is, is you take like a facial razor and you kind of tighten up your skin 
and you just kind of go down. So what this is doing is it's kind of getting rid of the peach fuzz that's on your skin as well as dead skin cells. So this is going to make more of a, a smoother surface for the makeup to lay down nicely. Um, if you like to use a primer, I would suggest using a gripping primer. One that is really good that I really enjoy is the Milk Hydro Grip. It is like a jelly primer and it has a um, cooling sensation. So it's very sticky. So it makes the, uh, the makeup really cling onto the skin there. Um, if you want to, you know, go very lightweight, less is more. So use a, uh, a CC, CC cream or spot conceal with, with a concealer. So one of your concealers, just kind of dab it on, you know, the spots or blemishes and just blend it out nicely with um, your finger here. It looks more natural and then you get a little bit more coverage um, without having to worry about your makeup creasing or sweating through throughout the day. And if you do find that you are sweating through your makeup, don't powder blot. The reason I say this is because when you're powdering, that powder is going to clog your pores, especially if you're sweating a lot. Blotting, you can get blot papers. They're really, they're really affordable. You can buy them online at Amazon or at your local um, drugstore or Walmart. And the blot's just gonna kind of remove the oils from your skin, but not touch the makeup. So it's not gonna remove anything and it's going to look like you just applied your makeup um, for the day. A special tip that I like to use because I do wear foundation throughout the summer um, is after I apply my base, I use the my foundation, um, concealer, blush. If I want to go um, more warmth in my face, I will use a bronzer. I will spray my setting spray all over my face and then I will go in with a damp beauty blender um, and pat that all over my face for about four to six minutes. Four to six minutes does sound like a lot of time to spend just kind of dabbing your face all over the place, but this is really going to melt the makeup in with your skin and make it last longer. And then after I like to take a tissue and just kind of lightly tap over my face to um, remove any excess makeup. This is really good, especially if you're going to be, you know, at work and you're wearing a mask. Um, you don't want to get that makeup all over the inside of your mask there. So this is going to kind of make it more mask proof as well. So not only do we want to protect our skin throughout the summer with, you know, skincare and makeup, but there's another step that we can take and that's buying UV protective clothing. So I did a few, um, I did some research and I found a few sites here that you can go online and you can buy um, uh, clothing that uh, helps you, pro uh, helps protect you against the UVA and UVB rays. Um, a couple here I like to include the sizes that they offered because I found that some were very limited to their size selection and um, like me I am a, uh, a I'm a bit heavier set I would say I'm plus size so the size selection is a big thing for me the coolie bar is um good they they do have some nice clothing there um but they are a little bit more pricey. Same with UV wise, where they had a good size range, the, the clothing options were great, um, but once again, a little bit more expensive. And then you have, you know, your bigger kind of store brands here that you, Sports Check and Mark's Work Warehouse. Mark's Work Warehouse is one of my favorites and my mom loves to shop there as well. Um, so those are good ones that are probably local in your area and you can shop in store now that things are kind of starting to open back up again. But one that I really wanted to touch on here is the Mountain Warehouse. I saw this and immediately fell in love with this site. The, the size ranges were incredible up to 4XL, which is fantastic. I did not see this with the other sites. Um, but the, 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 the clothing options that they had was very wide range when it, it ranged from women, children, men, and it was very affordable. They, as when I looked online the other day, they were having like a big um, sale up to 50% off. So if you're looking to get some summer clothes now, that's definitely one to check out. And I'm pretty sure that they are Canadian as well. So the shipping costs won't be, uh, won't cost you an arm and a leg. 
So I just want to go back to makeup for, for a quick minute. And I wanted to talk about this brand because this is one of the brands that is, is very important to me. So some of you may know who she is, Selena Gomez. She is a Disney Charles star. She was on Disney Channel and played in Wizard Lee's A Waverly Place. She is also a singer. She is somebody who I have looked up to since I was younger. I watched her on Disney. I listened to her music. And uh, in 2013, she was actually diagnosed with lupus. And she underwent a kidney transplant um, because her, her kidneys were failing due to her lupus. With finding out her diagnosis and when she got diagnosed it was around the same time that I was diagnosed so I really connect with her she created this beauty brand back in September of 2020 so it is quite new and it's called rare beauty the the brand focuses on breaking down the unrealistic and harmful standards of beauty and highlights the confidence and self-acceptance and the unique traits of people she knows uh, being in the the spotlight in the media that she gets criticized a lot and especially of the way her skin looks because with lupus you know we don't have very perfect skin you have those imperfections and the redness that you know people really can comment on and make you feel you know bad about yourself sometimes so she wanted to focus on this beauty brand that you know kind of makes you feel good about you um we do know that, you know, models and beauty gurus that you see online, they, they don't look like that. They have, you know, thousands of dollars of camera and light setups and there's, you know, photo editing and filters. And so her brand focuses more on very natural, cruelty-free products that are great for the skin. And everything that she has here is very lightweight. Every single time you purchase something from Rare Beauty, there's just a few of the products that she offers here. Most of them are very cream products. So they're very, you know, lightweight on the skin. They, a portion goes to the Rare Beauty Impact Fund. And what that fund does is it supports mental health. As you know, somebody who suffers with lupus, I found that after my diagnosis, I suffered a lot with, you know, depression, and anxiety. I had a hard time, you know, accepting my diagnosis and that this is something that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. And, you know, I, I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to my health. I never really know what I'm going to expect each day of how I'm going to feel. So it's really important that this brand focuses a lot on mental health. And um, what they're trying to do is trying to get this program taught in schools because with the generation now, they, they do suffer with a lot of mental health issues. And most doctors don't realize that is, you know, an illness. And, uh, you know, people don't really know how to, you know, cope with the, the depression and anxiety that they feel. So being taught at a young age on, you know, what mental health is and ways that, you know, you can help treat it is very important. Um, and this is what this, um, this beauty brand stands for. So if you're looking for a great brand to, to support that has great products here, I would definitely suggest Rare Beauty. You can find them at Sephora. Now you can see that the pricing is a little bit more higher end. A good thing with Sephora is they do offer afterpay. I know that's been a, a big thing for me where I have a card of, you know, hundreds of dollars of things and I can get that split up into, you know, four uh, bi-weekly payments. So it doesn't break the bank very much. Um, but yes, I just wanted to touch on this brand a little bit here. And then finally, uh, as Sandra said at the beginning, we uh, she noticed this look that I did for Lupus Awareness Day that I posted on the Lupus Canada Facebook website. Some of you may have seen it. If not, here it is. Um, like she said, when I was diagnosed with lupus, I had a hard time um, trying to kind of reconnect with myself. And especially when COVID happened, that was a very scary thing. We never really seen this global pandemic and this caused a lot of, you know, anxiety for me. And so I kind of threw myself into makeup. I've always had this passion for makeup all my life. When I was able to start wearing makeup, when I went into high school, I was wearing it. Of course, 
Um, back then I was wearing the, the Dream Matte Mousse foundation that I just kind of smeared all over my face. And I had thick rimmed black eyeliner all around my eyes. Um, but makeup has always been a passion of mine. And I, I definitely wanted to experiment with it with it more and break myself out of my comfort zone with different techniques and colors. And I found this as a form of, you know, creativity and expression for myself. I find that if I'm having a bad day, I can go into my makeup room and sit down and turn on some music and just kind of create something on my face. And it doesn't matter, you know, how I'm feeling one day. If if I'm feeling down, the look may be a little darker. If I'm feeling really good about myself, it can be bright and colorful. And it just kind of helps me express how I'm feeling um, more instead of keeping it bottled in. So I wanted to create this look for Lupus Awareness Day because with lupus, it's such a hard disease to, to be able to, you know, let someone know how it is because they don't they don't understand the the pain and the fight that we feel inside our bodies each day because when they look at us we we look perfectly normal it's not a a very visible disease unless they they see the redness of our skin from the rash that we have um they don't quite understand and like they say it's a disease of so many faces and it's so hard to to diagnose because you never quite know what it is. I know when I first got diagnosed, they thought that I had cancer. And I mean, you hear a lot about cancer and you hear a lot about diabetes or fibromyalgia, but you don't hear a lot about lupus and not many people know about it. So I wanted to create this look that shows kind of the grayscale of what we may feel inside the pain, the flare ups, the depression, the anxiety, we can feel very dark and alone at times, but on the outside, we work, we look perfectly normal and people don't quite understand that fight that we're feeling um, every single day. I mean, every day, you know, is different. Some days are better than others, but you always have that, that fight um, in you every day and, and it never goes away. And then I wanted to create this, this butterfly on the eye, that purple butterfly, because it represents the, the lupus that we have. Um, so this is the look that Sandra was, was talking about, and I, I'm very proud of it. I'm great. I'm so happy that, you know, she really enjoyed it and others really enjoyed it. It did get a lot of, um, great feedback and I'm so happy to be able to, to share this with everybody here. And I hope to keep inspiring others with, with my makeup and the creativity. And, you know, if, if you're somebody who loves makeup and you can play around with it and, you know, just express yourself more. Makeup is, you know, an art form and there's, there's no limits or rules to makeup. Just kind of throw yourself into it and let your creativity guide you. And I, I know with me, it always makes me feel better at the end of the day. And I'm always so proud of myself of what I, what I create. And I hope to kind of keep going and inspire others to, to, to follow their passion and not let lupus stop you along the way because you know we're so much stronger than than this illness and we can we can kick it in the butt as long as you know we have that support and that strength from our friends and families and the lupus community. So this is it. Um, thank you again so much for for watching and listening to me talk and uh, yeah I guess I'll take some questions now if anybody has any for me. Okay, thank you, Colleen. That was wonderful. Um, yes, there are a few questions, so I'm going to go through them. Jeremy and myself will be going through, so I will go back and get the first question, and then um, Jeremy, if you could follow up with the second one, and we could maybe do each. Um, so the first one was, let's go back a bit. Uh, Okay, um, okay. Um, someone wanted to know is SPF, uh, where are we now? I just lost. Okay, um, she wanted to know is SPF uh, 30 enough? Now, I'm not sure if she's referenced because I think you were more referring to the moisturizer content versus overall um, sunscreen protection, but maybe you want to just address that for us, please. So, SPF 30. Um... I think they mostly say SPF 50 would be the strongest um, SPF that you can get. But, um, you know, 
most moisturizer brands, they don't offer that high of an SPF protection. So if, if 30 is what you can get, that's the highest one that you can get, that, that's great because it's still protection against the sun, right? Little protection is better than no protection. And if you're layering it um, with other, you know, the moisturizer and then the, the, your foundation that has SPS in it as well, as long as the setting spray, you're getting a full, a decent amount of coverage on your skin. And then with the setting spray, you can just touch that up throughout the day and um, make sure that everything, you know, is, is good, that your skin's still protective there because you can still apply sunscreen to your arms and, you know, your back. But if you're wearing makeup on your face, you don't really want to touch that, right? So I, I would suggest if, the SPF 30 is the highest that you can get, then I would get it because it's, it's better than nothing, right? Perfect, thank you. Um, so the next question is, are you aware of any organic slash natural cosmetics without all of the chemicals in them? There are a few. Um, some of them can be very rare to come by. Um, like I said, with Rare Beauty, they're, they're very natural, um, cruelty-free. They, they focus more on healthy ingredients, skin-loving ingredients for your skin, and it doesn't have the, the harsh ingredients or chemicals that some um, products may offer. So uh, I would definitely say um, you know, do your research with the, the makeup products that you're using and the brands and what they stand for. Um, I've also heard that Airbond is also another great one that's cruelty free and very um, organic and offers a lot of, you know, skin loving ingredients as well. Um, so yeah, I, I would just say if you're looking into different makeup brands, definitely do your research and see what they stand for. Um, some brands in different, uh, you know, parts of the world, their environmental friendliness is different compared to, you know, out in the, uh, the U.S. or here in Canada and Europe of what they think is, you know, environmentally friendly and organic and cruelty free. So definitely do your research and see, you know, what the brand is all about. And then you can kind of go from there. If that's a brand that you would definitely connect with and you like, then I would say go for it full force. Oh, sorry about that. I just remember. I can't hear you. Okay, why why does the pattern the makeup for four to six minutes melt foundation to the skin? So, oh yes, good question. So when you just apply the foundation to your skin, it's just kind of sitting on top. And now let me remind you that makeup is always going to look like makeup. But when you take that extra step and apply the, um, the setting spray and a damp beauty blender, it melts it right into the skin. So it's not kind of laying on top of it so much where it can just kind of rub off a little bit. It melts deep into the skin where it kind of really sets in. And I find that this was the best technique for me to use if you find another technique. Um, that works better for you, then, you know, everybody's different. And I would go with what is best for you and your skin type, but definitely the setting spray with a damp beauty blender. I always say damp. So just run it underneath water or your sponge and squeeze it out um, the best you can. You don't want it soaking wet because that's going to kind of ruin the, the base that you laid on, but yeah, it just melts everything beautifully into the skin and it makes it look more natural. Thank you. Um, and then we have a question about, do you have any recommendations for makeup remover? Makeup remover, oh, good one. So I don't like to use um, makeup remover wipes. A lot of people do. I personally don't because I can find, for one, they're not very environmentally friendly. And you want something that's going to be good for the environment. So if you're someone like me and you wear a lot of makeup, I would suggest um, getting like an oil cleansing balm. And you don't even have to, you know, spend a lot of money at, you know, the drugstore and buy an oil cleansing balm. Um, most makeup brands do offer them now because they're very important. What I like to do is I can buy a big tub on Amazon of virgin coconut oil 
you just put a little bit in your hand, rub it all over and it turns into an oil. And then you just kind of rub your face. This breaks down the, um, all the product that you have and in your pores. And then you can just take a, um, like I, I have a makeup removing cloth that I throw in the wash when it gets dirty. And I just rinse that with hot water and I wipe it away. That breaks down all that makeup. So it's much easier for me to, uh, to wash my face. And then I go in with my cleanser and my toner and my basic skincare routine. So coconut oil is a definitely good option that is environmentally friendly and it's organic. So it's great. And it also gives a lot more hydration to your skin as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Jeremy, there's one that was directed to me. So it's not in the, the way it is just to, I don't want to throw you off. Okay. Do you have any product suggestions for protecting and covering rashes on other body areas that are exposed during the summer legs, arms, back, etc.? cetera? Um, for makeup, I, I honestly, to tell you the truth, I, I've never really had to do that. I mostly just kind of cover up other parts of my body with clothing um, and then the UV protective clothing that you can use to kind of help protect uh, your arms or your legs throughout the summertime. Um, you can always go to your dermatologist. There is, you know, topical creams or ornaments that you can get. I know that with myself, I get really bad psoriasis, especially on my scalp. So I have a special ointment that I use to help with um, the sores that I get on my scalp. Um, I find that with that kind of stuff, it's better to just go see a dermatologist and use the products that they recommend. Um, because I mean, makeup's going to cover it up a little bit, but it's not going to heal the rash or the, the skin lesions um, that you may have um, that's caused from the sun. Okay, um, Elena mentioned there's a website. Um, if, if anyone wants to make a note of that, thank you, Elena, for that uh, regarding uh, skin deep. So if anyone would like to make and uh, for some additional information read, read products, um, she has mentioned that website. So thank you, Elena. Thank you. Okay, sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. No problem. Um, so I know this is included in your slides, but uh, the person missed the first little bit. So uh, they just want a high level difference between foundation, CC, and BB creams. Yes. Yeah, so foundation um, is, you know, the basic kind of one that a lot of people use. It has more full coverage. It has a different finish to um, to when you apply it. So like I said, um, at the beginning, if you're somebody who has dry skin, um, I would recommend going with a dewy finish foundation or if you have oily or combination skin, I would go with a, a matte finish. And uh, you know, foundation also has the different shade ranges that can you know, be easier for you to shade match um, and usually when you wanna shade match to your neck here. Um, but with foundation, it's also heavier on the skin compared to, you know, the other two. So what CC creams do is I recommend it if you have more mature skin, it's a color correcting, it, um, it offers more of medium to full coverage, but it's definitely lighter on the skin. It doesn't give you that heaviness feeling. It helps color correct. So the redness that you may have from your rash, and it has more skin loving ingredients but on um, like anti-aging properties and hydration properties. And some also have hyaluronic acid, which I said before is really important because as you get older, the hyaluronic acid in your skin that it is naturally produced doesn't, you know, happen a lot. So anything with hyaluronic acid is really great. I do suggest it. I, I, I'm a sucker for any products with hyaluronic acid in it. And then BB cream is just, you know, a basic, very lightweight. Um, it's the lightest coverage that you can get if you just want to give your skin a little bit more um, vitamins and nutrients, uh, and they usually have SPF in it, then I would suggest, you know, a BB cream. If you want light, light coverage. You don't want to really look like you're wearing makeup on your skin. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to check the chat. There's a lot of uh, compliments um, 
Um, great presentation, beautiful, love the makeup, Lupa Stay, et cetera. So uh, hopefully you had a chance to uh, perhaps read some of those. Um, okay, so the next question, uh, any suggestions for covering or smoothing texture for Discord Lupus? Discord, yeah. So when you think of makeup, people think that it's going to cover everything. And you're always going to have texture on your skin. It's it's skin, right? You're going to have blemishes and bumps and all that stuff here, and that's okay. Um, makeup it, it's going to help hide, you know, your blemishes or the redness of your skin, but it's always going to show the texture because makeup is made to look like makeup. Makeup's not made to look like skin, so you can do, you know, different steps of, you know, having a high-end skincare routine and, you know, using a primer, uh, a pore filling primer um, or a gripping primer and different foundations with different finishes to try to eliminate, eliminate that texture of your skin. But up close, you're always going to have that texture and that's okay because that's your skin and your skin is beautiful and makeup's made to look like makeup. Makeup's not made to look like skin. It's not made to look absolutely flawless, right? So just keep that in mind is, you know, you can do whatever you can with your makeup, but it's still going to look like makeup and that's okay. Okay, uh, thank you. So next question, are Arbon products good, healthy, comparable items to the ones that you mentioned? I would say yes. I, I haven't really used Arbon a whole lot, but I do know people um, who have, and they do get a lot of good, you know, feedback on the beauty communities that I'm part of. Um, they offer very good, you know, high-end pro uh, high products that, you know, can be compared to, you know, luxury brands that, you know, if you're paying $53 for a foundation, um, it, it's the exact same of if you're paying $20 to a foundation, they have the exact same kind of properties. Um, and the two, it's just mostly if you're paying for a higher brand, you're paying more for the name. Um, so I would say, yes, Airbond's really good. I've, I've known people, they absolutely love the brand. They stick by the brand. They're very dedicated to the brand. So if that's something that, you know, really connects with you, then I would say, yeah, you know, buy it and use it because it, it, I've, yeah, a lot of people <laughs> usually go for it if um, I'm part of a few Facebook uh, groups for the makeup community and somebody's asking for, you know, alternative to, you know, a foundation or, you know, a lipstick and Airbon is always thrown in there several times of what products they love and are great. Um, just a comment, I have used some of the Arbon products, but um, just uh, for the platform, it is not sold in the store. Um, it is um, usually there's rep, reps who sells it. So if you are interested in their product, you would have to go on their website and perhaps see if there's a local rep in your area. You can order the products online, of course, as well. But if you're not too familiar with it, you might want to speak to someone who is familiar with the product. Uh, is that correct? It uh, is. Yeah. Because yeah, so when I when I brought the products, I brought it through one of their reps. But they are very good. The CC cream, they're very lightweight, um, yep. chemically free. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna answer that part of the question. But I know they are environmentally friendly. So I'll say that. But I'm not sure um, how chemically free all their products are. So I don't want to answer that part. But yeah, they do have uh, good products overall. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay, I okay. I'm not sure if this is a a, com, a question or a just an a, um, a comment from her. She says, "I spray my face with sunblock after makeup versus using a sunblock lotion," which I think that spray the one you were talking about may be something similar to that, right? Yep. So you can get you know an actual sunblock spray compared to like a setting spray with SPF in it. Um, Either one, if you if you prefer the sunblock spray, then I, I would definitely go for it. I just like to use, it's my personal opinion of using a setting spray with SPF in it because it does help melt the, the products more into my face and it does help 
make my foundation or um, whatever else I have on um, last longer and prevents creasing. Um, and I also like that the setting spray doesn't give me that white cast, like I said before, that some sunblocks can can use. But if you found uh, you know, a sunblock spray that doesn't give you the white cast and works perfectly good for you, then I would stick with that routine. You don't wanna change your routine too much because you know your skin can react you know different to to different products right so if you found something that's great for you then then stick with it perfect uh thank you um kind of answered this i think already but um when do you put on sunscreen before or after the makeup so I always um, put sunscreen on um, before my makeup and, and then I use products with the SPF in it. So that gives me that little extra protection over top. So I will use, um, I think the, the moisturizer that I'm using, it's um, like, a, like a sunblock lotion is um, Neo Strata, their, their sunblock lotion. And I'm pretty sure it has SPF 45 in it. Um, I find that that doesn't give me the greasy feel or that white cast. So I, um, I usually apply that after as the last step of my skincare routine, and then I'll apply my makeup over top. And usually my foundation always has the SPF. Um, uh, I think 20 is the one that I'm using right now. I'm into the L'Oreal um, Infallible Foundation. Uh, or the CoverGirl Olay that has um, SPF 20 in it as well. Um, and then once again, I have my, my setting spray with the SPF as well. So I'm kind of building up that coverage with different products with uh, what SPFs they, they offer. Okay. Okay, we have a few comments. Um, Lynn mentioned that the Ab Abnormal Beauty Company is also cruelty-free and affordable, um, but again, she's not sure how chemical-free is this. So thank you um, everyone for participating. Um, someone mentioned earlier as well that you can get certain, uh, certain fabric from uh, Fabricland if you're, you're someone who sews. So again, um, you guys have just been very interactive tonight. Thank you so much for all your input and your feedback. Um, so the next one, again, I'm not sure if it's just a comment. I have heard that putting the setting spray first works wonders. Yes, uh, so that was a big trend that I saw last, I think it was last year, where what people were doing was they were a, um, I think it, it was they were applying their skincare and then they would, um, I'm pretty, uh, so many people did it kind of different ways. Uh, they would, um, I think they would apply their, their moisturizer and then they would take like a setting powder and tap the setting powder lightly all over their face. And that's more like just a, a light translucent powder. And then what they were doing was they were, I think they were taking like their, um, their, their primer and putting the primer on and then, or then setting their face with the setting spray and then applying their foundation. And I tried this and it actually worked great. <laughs> and I was shocked because I'm just like, this sounds really weird to do, but apparently um, out in like the professional makeup um, community with a lot of professional makeup artists that work on celebrities, they do this and it makes their the, the base just look so nice and smooth and the makeup lasts all day. So I tried it and then of course, after I was done applying my makeup, I went back in with my setting spray again to just kind of lock everything in. But yeah, it was great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next question, what is the ointment for your scalp? Okay, the ointment for my scalp. Um, so I get really bad psoriasis. Um, I don't know what it's called. I, it's in my bathroom right now. Um, but um, I get really bad sores and dandruff all over my scalp. So I just apply this, um, this ointment um, at night and rub it in um, to the spots that are, are bothering me because I've also been finding I'm getting, getting a lot of hair loss and those areas there. And it just kind of helps treat and, and um, you know, minimize the source that I have. And then once they're, they're kind of gone, then I could just go and use it once a week. Um, but it's very, it's very potent. So you don't want to use too, too much of it. 
Um, I got it from a dermatologist. Um, actually, I'll go get it and read it for a minute. I'll just be right back. I, I, I'm, I'm actually, um, Colleen. Yep, I'm um, here. I was just sending Heidi a message that I will okay. get the name from you and email yes, it to perfect. her. Perfect. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. Just so, um, yeah, you don't, because um, yeah. I want to try and get a few more questions in. Yep, that's perfect. Um, so, I, yeah, I told her I, I'll get that from you. Um, okay, so we do have a few others. So, okay, so uh, my dermatologist at the Ottawa Lupus Clinic suggests to use the Clinoderm Lotion and SPF products. It is SPF 45. I also use their moisturizer. They are a little bit costly, but a little goes a long way. You can purchase this product at major pharmacies like Shoppers Drug Mart. So thank you, Christine, for that again. Um, again, like I said, everyone has been super interactive. So thank you very much. Um, okay, so what was the name? Okay, what is the difference with oh, pure fill-in primer and gripping primer? Do they okay. say on the bottle? So pore filling primer, um, it will say on the bottle if it's a pore filling primer. Um, so what it's going to kind of do is fill your pores a little bit. So they kind of, um, it gives you that blurring effect. So you kind of look more airbrushed. Um, with a gripping primer, it's more of like this sticky primer um, and it usually has a cooling effect. So the, the gripping primer will help. I don't think there's anything really to do with the wrinkles. Little wrinkles. And then the... the Pore filling primer will just kind of help, um, you know, really make you have that airbrush look to your skin. So they do two different things. Um, whether you want to use a primer, that's completely up to you. Some people don't believe in primers. Um, I, I, I personally like the primers, but yeah, it, it's everybody's different with how they like to apply their makeup. But those are the, the differences. Um. Okay, so I think that would wrap it up. Uh, Madeline mentioned um, just uh, in the comments again, again, a great interaction, everyone. Natural makeup, a mascara I use, uh, the one from Lush, I have sensitive eyes and it's the only mascara that doesn't cause me to get uh, um, styles, styles or chalazians. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. <laughs> um, but that is again, just a, a feedback from Madeline there. Um, I think that is about it. So look at that. Um, Again, thanks for the great evening talk. Thank you. Um, do you put, okay, we went through that. Let me just see if there's anything else. Um, no, I think that's about it. Um, I think we've covered everything. Jeremy, did we miss anything? No, everything's good. Yeah, I think we covered everything. But um, again, like I said, Colleen, lots of uh, good uh, feedback there. You guys have been a super interactive crowd tonight. Um, so if there's no more questions, before we go, I just want to mention a couple of things. Please visit uh, lupusontario.org for all our upcoming events, um, support group meetings, as well as uh, our Walk for Lupus 2021, again, is going virtual. Uh, the walk site is up. Um, if you would like to join, um, join an existing uh, walk, please go ahead and do that. But if not, we are also looking for others to, uh, to start their own walk. So if you're in an area that they don't have a walk, um, just contact the office and they will get you set up. Again, the walk is scheduled for August 21st, but it is virtual and it's not just walking. You can knit, you can canoe, you can do whatever as um, your ability permits on that day. And of course, for more information, just visit our website, lupusontario.org. Uh, again, membership is free for uh, those of you who are on the call who are not a member as yet. Um, so that's it. Colleen, you did a fantastic job. Thank you very much for volunteering your time to Lupus Ontario and uh, helping us get ready for summer and looking beautiful in the process. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate this opportunity. This, is, this has been great and I, I hope to do this with Lupus Ontario again someday. Mm -hmm. Good. We look forward to having you again. I will email you regarding um, a couple of the questions and get those out too. If there was anything else, I'll let you know. But again, like I said, a lot of thank yous. I think everyone who's on the panel tonight, I really appreciate um, your what you have done for us tonight. And also, your, your, I think I'm going to say it again, for bringing awareness to Lupus Ontario. I think that is what our aim is, uh, is just bringing awareness and just letting everyone uh, recognize us for who we are. Now, we're not just 
um, people who might be set, but we're people who are living fulfilled life as well. So thank you for just reminding of us that, okay? Well, thank you so much. Okay. So everyone, good night. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to having you at uh, our webinar is July 20th. Uh, it will be, uh, of course, we're doing a follow-up to what Michelle did and mental health last uh, summer. She's coming back with another great one. Uh, please visit uh, lupusontario.org slash education to register. Um, also, if you need any additional support outside of our support group meetings, um, please email support at lupusontario.org. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, Jeremy.